Ardent, Elizabeth Smart, December 27, 1913, to March 4, 1986. Life is murder, and art is even worse. Do I dare to plunge into this journey? Put on the clarinet quintet in A. Let Mozart help me through. I find as many answers there as anywhere. A happy little pill unwinds me. What I remember best is Kingsmere, my truest paradise. I recognize each rock and root, the path unwinding to the boathouse, the leap of leopard frogs against the still midday, the dark, cool water of the lake. Storms roil beyond the waving mapled hills and up through pines to where I crouch, the creaking lovely floor to clip my fashioned paper dolls and memorize the genus of each blessed simple thing. Implicit ferns unfolding in the shade, mouths of giant pike, their googly eyes, the mountain, its mantle sweetened air. Nighttime, the humped raccoons beyond the walls creep past my torpid bedstead. The empty, sighing lounge chairs, stains of misplaced highballs, feather ticking, dawn. In the fall, back to Ottawa for the smarts, the chill air on beechwood, green stiff skirts of uniforms, my sisters and I walking through the darkened elmwood doors, good girls, all of us. I loved to see the youngest ones at play, in the wooden toy house near Springfield. The doors so small, you'd wonder how a baby could pass through, perfect housewives, practicing. The sound of mummy's wails at night in winter, the sight of her adrift in snow, or pacing on the balcony, or rolling round the bathroom floor. My sister Helen's dress torn off, her tender breasts exposed, face slapped, and baby Russell crying. A small body sobbing in a bed of maple leaves. Daddy read his lawyer's letters and laid truth down like matting. This is how we lived, and we were lonely. My God, the hell of Ottawa! There's never been a place so dismal. Bloody invitations at the Après Ski, an afternoon of skating up at Rideau Hall, the little theatre evenings. Then London, where Jane and I were sovereigns. I'd forage every alley for something crammed with meaning, anything relentless, captivating, whole. I knew one day I'd find it, knew it in my bones, my sex. We lived the life that Mummy never did, and when she came to town, her bomb would sweep us in, her lovely smell, her underwear, her shopping sprees. She was warm, extravagant, delicious. And then she'd turn to me and say, I've hated you all day. You're the meanest little thing. Any child could write this drivel. I must marry a poet. It's the only thing. All these summers, Kingsmere, a private lovely life with leaves and earth, wild geese and Dutchman's breeches, hepaticus and bloodroot, birdsong, the smell of mornings after rain. Pleasing mother, being self, my body but a seam that rips from end to end. Huge diversions of the upper class, dress-up parties at the King Estate, dancing on our screen verandas, my journals overflow with incantation, bucking back the emptiness with language. One day, in Better Books in Charing Cross, I found the poems of a man named Barker and told the world that I would marry him. This is what I want. Art, love, and children. Do not stoop to offer less than everything. Waiting for the bus in Monterey, I changed my lipstick often and considered what the future held. His wife climbed down. So thin and shy, so dark against my shining head. I must be radiant, a glow on fire. We drive to where we live nearby in huts. 
George Barker's hand on mine, his arm against my nipple, the whole world rocking. I try so hard to be polite until he comes upon me in the water, and now I love the night, the legs of children, tall poinsettias and the lemon trees. I love the residential palms that dress in pantaloons. I love the birds in pepper trees, the sun on swimming pools, the multitude of kisses. Never enough skin to sate me. It is no surprise I am arrested at the Arizona border, because he is my love and I am his. Who cares for his English class awareness, prissy wife? Can there be life or breath apart from this? In the mornings I am ill with child at Pender Harbor. I write my book, Desire Made Flesh and Rhetoric. By Grand Central Station I sat down and wept, was birthed two weeks before Georgina. I do not mind my child a bastard. It will help them to avoid the bores, the snobs, the petty, the afraid. I had four in total. My darlings, all my dreams. We live with nothing, yet I smocked their clothes, made nettle soup, held honeyed bodies in my arms, bleached nappies in the dark, wiped noses, rode them here and there upon my bike, smoked and drank and wept, and George would come and leave his seed behind, but never any cash or caring, just an Ottawa allowance, and I lived so far away, in farms in England or wherever costs were few, a low, wet cottage in the Irish hills, bedsits in London, barnyards, attics. Oh, beloved friends, oh, stagger me with cases, bottles clunking well into the weekend drunk. George, I beg you, I'm so afraid of wind, the empty house, the air raids, burglars, lunatics and ghouls, catastrophe, appearances and death. You must do something, for I'm simply going mad. You are my husband and my one true love, no matter how many other wives post you their midnight dreams. Georgina, Christopher, Sebastian, and then Rose. The womb's an unwieldy baggage. Who can stagger uphill with such a noisy weight? To send the children to good schools with clean and decent clothing, lots of books. I worked Queen, worked Vogue. I was the best copywriter in the city. Sat at desk, sniffed glue, held phone, typed hard, took drink, wrote fast and funny, hard and real. Scurried through the filthy streets, harassed by deadlines. Took pills, the crystal clear dependency. Bloody sharp, that focus. I ground my teeth put my feet up on the weekends, wellies on the workbench, dead soldiers piling up below. What is left of my youth rushes up like a geyser as I sit in the sun, combing lice from my hair. How to survive life's script? You pray and bang your head, be beautiful, wait, love, rage, rail, look, and possibly, if lucky, see. Love again. Try to stop loving. Go on loving. Bustle about, rush to and fro. Whatever you say will be far less than truth. I saw my children off to life and turned alone back down the bitter lane. BBC sonatas in the kitchen, empty page. I am desperate from hating, pushed too far to do too much. But then, the strangest thing. My little book revived and I'm famous. The heady stuff of praise and recognition sets me restless and all a-tremble. There is money, and I fix a place to live and work a garden there. Crawl on my hands and knees upstairs to bed. Why not? Tricks, slate of hand, anything it takes. And in the mornings I rise and toil amidst the pits and rumblings of the earth. How dear it is to birth a flower, hold a cutting, name a thing, and they wind quite round about me, like my children always did. I begin a poem here and there, small things, a flutter more than most. Then Rose takes up the needle, so I hold her children too. Death by misadventure, so they said. We buried Rose. 
When one's own heart child goes to death, what's left? Nothing wards, no language. Why did I not tell her what I knew? The long bitterness of life, the mean, the ungenerous, the need to forge capacities for pain. George has many children. What's one less? The one he laid his hands on, seldom, gone for good. Life is the roll of matter heaving into heaven in its painful, individual way. They asked me back to Canada to talk about the craft. I drank away the bleak lot where I lived. Friends turned their heads in fear and bold disgust. The late-night coffee shops and men. The vomit on the rugs. Then home at last. Clematis everywhere and rain. Worm was my best beast friend. Mud was my first love. I adore this twisted acre and lie in bed remembering, calling out in sleep for mummy. What these nightmares bring me to, I dread. When these pills kick in, I open up my head to memory and fear, whole notebooks filling late at night with writing near impossible to read. But it is there. You find it if you can. Make from it all whatever books you wish.'